the main work I do uh, for the last 15 years has been scenic byway projects. Statewide, there are 14 scenic byways in Maine. And the scenic byways are not just a Maine DOT thing, but they involve local community groups and volunteers uh, for each of them. Um, some are more active than others, but I team up with the local residents and the different towns to implement a bunch of projects. So that's statewide. Today I'm going to show you the projects I've been involved with along the Katahdin Woods and Water Scenic Byway. All right, so we'll start our tour. What you see now is a map of the Katahdin Woods and Water Scenic Byway, and I've got my little hand here to direct you a little bit, but you can see Baxter State Park up here on the left. This is the National Monument, these darker uh, green bordered areas. Here's the South Gate and the scenic byway goes from the South Gate all the way down through Millinocket, through East Millinocket, in Medway where you can pick it up off the interstate, which is right up this way. Then you have the Route 11 part of the byway that goes all the way up through Stacyville and then into Patton. And then you continue on the byway all the way up to Grand Lake Matagammon and the north entrance. It doesn't, it doesn't touch the park, but it's right there, right before both gates. So the interesting thing to me is the naming of the, the scenic byway was done before the monument, and it really was the idea of the massive Katahdin Mountain range and then the area surrounding it is the woods and waters and that is a special place that is acknowledged by calling it a scenic byway both on the state of maine program and locally the, the journey starts out on interstate 95 where we did this um, interpretive panel and it was a request by someone in the public that said, oh, we have, there's nothing there. You can just look at the mountain, but let's do a little bit of information about it. So we developed this one and it's quite a large one. It's almost four feet wide. And you can see that we have a little information about Pomola. We have, the, you know, how the Baxter State Park came into being. And we used a close up view of the top to lure people in when, who've never really been close to the mountain. So we wanted to, give them a different view. And then we developed a really unique timeline across the bottom that features a lot of the highlights about Baxter State Park. So that's out on the interstate. When you get out onto the byway, you can see these signs right here. The top part is a, a logo that's on all the byways, and then each one has a, the specific name below. Um, the, the group, the local group there is called the Katahdin Tourism Partnership. And back when they got started and this first became a byway, we create, they created uh, with a lot of volunteer effort, a little uh, brochure calling it a four, a four season scenic drive that you can see here. Whoops. And in the brochure, they had information about the byway and local businesses bought ads in the magazine and this was distributed statewide and in other tourist information places to attract people to the byway. This is a pretty uh, tough effort, but it was, it, I thought it was really neat. The next thing that came along was the development of the Scenic Byway's own logo. And you can see we got, uh, it's kind of a wintry version of it, but it's unique. You've got a little boat down there for the waters. You got the woods right up at the top and then you've got the mountain in there. So this is an idea that could, be uh, put on t-shirts or um, you might see it at some of the sites that are along the scenic byway. We also created a cool website um, which was, um, you can see the logo there, 89 miles of new experiences and when you dive into it, it's a great way to um, figure out how you might want to find things out there in the region or look for ideas to places to visit. 
and, and I encourage you to visit it because it's got a lot of great information on it. And then if you look at this, this image I took myself down in Castine, Maine, out ex exploring the coast. And I saw that they had this great new book with the partnership group did sitting right there between Portland and lighthouses a and the little game for kids right there, which I tried. So um, this is a great, a great find here. It shows the quality of the place and, and that it ranked really high with the tourist information people here in Castine when, when people on the coast said, well, what else can I do in Maine? So they would send them north to Katahdin area. So you can explore this byway by bus if you want, by car, of course, by bicycle, or you could take a float plane when you get up there and go out in the back country, which is, you know, an awesome thing to do for sure. I have not done it yet, but it's on my bucket list. And then I go from that great plane image to this crazy planning image. So working for Maine DOT as a landscape architect, I like to make sure the things and projects that I'm doing kind of make sense. That's just the way I like to work it out. So you can see up here in the north, north gate area, and then down here in the south gate area and all the way around, we had this planning effort to figure out where we would build facilities, put up signs. Um, you know, it's a complicated drawing, but it just shows you that we had a lot of things planned for them. Not all of these have been implemented. Hopefully we'll continue to do a bunch of those. And so the rest of the presentation, you'll see quite a few things that we have done. So the tour I'm gonna tell you about, it kind of starts down at the South Gate and then winds its way all the way around to the North. I just organized it that way to make it easy. And this is not on any of the scenic byway, but it's within the region. And that's just as important because as if everybody that lives up there knows, you know, you're kind of like stuck in one location and it takes a long time to get someplace else. So while you're down by the south entrance to Baxter, this is one of the great spots, Abel Bridge. This is an early spring shot. So it was just a beautiful moment with the sunlight hitting the mountain. And then as you head back towards the, the byway, I, I pass this spot all the time and it's just a little bit of woods and waters and it's such a beautiful little spot off the Golden Road. So I, I, I kept snapping pictures and I put this in here to show you that on any given day or any given time, the landscape can change, the lighting can change, and you have in this region this incredible amount of water and woods and bogs and all these little places that are really unique. One of the facilities that's close to the byway is the River Pond Nature Trail. This view here, you can see in the bottom, I I'm, I'm, came out of the woods and then I'm walking out because it's not, it's, you know, I was able to walk out on like a little pathway there and just get this great shot of Katahdin. At the River Pond Nature Trail, we just recently came up with a new kiosk with this sign on it and some interpretive signs. So the idea here is we've created a really nice map. It has mileage points on it, and it shows you where all the interpretive signs are. Hopefully you can see that well. We note that it's a working forest because it's owned by a timber management company. And as you know, once you cut the trees, it takes 20 years or so before they're ready to be cut again. So luckily they allow people to use this great location to enjoy and get out there in nature. And on the right hand side, you can see we have lots of little images of unique things that you might find out there. So that greets you at the head of the trails. The trails are all really marked well. There's the little snake I found one day in the fall, just right in the middle of the trail. I had to be careful not to step on them, but you never know what you'll find out there. This is the edge of the river pond from a different view, looking more south. And when I'm out there in the, in the summer, or this is kind of late fall, you can see the fall color of a pitcher plant. So in river pond, there's just an amazing array of things that you can find 
related to woods and waters. And this guy's in the boggy area there. It's so cool. This is a winter shot right after we put up the signs last fall. That's one of the signs you can see Katahdin in the background right up here. Now that's a close up of the sign. So we did uh, 11 of these signs out there. So now if you, before it was just the trail through the woods, but now you can find your way around these different areas and habitat types and some information about logging out there. And you see down in the bottom here is the little guide so that when you come up upon a sign, you know where you are. There's five miles of trails out there. And probably like, I don't know how many thousands of chipmunks. See this guy right there? He was just staring at me. What's going on? <laughs> I'm working. It's a beautiful forest to walk through. And it's filled with more of these little treasures. In spring at Trillium, in fall, you can see the, the mossy face on that big boulder and that little hairy top of ferns. In fall, I hit it just right. The whole forest for like a mile was like this beautiful golden a forest paradise. And then different times, uh, a little earlier than the fall color, you see the mushroom on the left. And then that's the dried pitcher plant flower later in the winter out at the bog where it's much easier to get out into. Oops. And then in the fall, you can't beat that. That was just an amazing day right there. Fall color. River pond is filled with, you can see all the pond lilies and stuff right there. And this is one of the great spots to go see a moose pretty soon. It should be prime if you better bring your bug stuff, <laughs> if you dare. Oh, and the signs that we put at River Pond, I had to, my first attempt to mark the locations, I was driven out by the bugs, mosquitoes and black flies. And this was like in the fall, I just, I couldn't do it. And I had head netting, I had like two layers of raincoats on, but it was just too intense. So I had to go back later when they were gone. There, there I am at, you know, marking out the signs. I brought my skis and it was quite nice to ski there. Okay, so now moving on from River Pond. We're out on the byway now and this is the Northwood Trading Post. I'm, maybe many of you know that, but it's located at the lakes where we built, a, uh, recently built a scenic turnout. So in the background, you can see the Northwoods Trading Post. Here's the logo. And this, this little spot was a parking lot. And we designed, there was like a dirt gravel lot. We, this is our landscape plan we drew up. We had engineering help, other landscape architects help, and I was leading the project. And you can see the site plan right here where we have the parking lot and then a little space for people to get information and the council ring over in this area. So this view, the top is that what was there. Kind of, you know, people use this for a lot of different things. They would snowmobile in winter, go in there, but you can see it's kind of disorganized and just a no man's land. So, the Katahdin Tourism Partnership, we had Scenic Byway grant dollars left over from the program back in 2012, and we finally were able to get this little place built here. So I have some slides of construction. They're bringing the light post base from Bangor, and you can see all the equipment in the background. Today was cur install the curb day. The curb is important so that people, when they pull in in their cars, don't run you over if you're walking around reading some signs. And this, they had this brand new giant excavator right there to do all the work. Because they had to haul these boulders out in the area that we were going to do some filling. And as you'll see, as a landscape architect, it was a great pleasure to see these come out of the ground because I could use them in the landscape. So you can see this one right here. And these are the new signs that we put in. This one right here is about the 
the, what you can do in the area right nearby. I have a, a larger shot of that in a minute. And then these are our interpretive signs. And here's one of those big rocks right there. So I put it so that you can climb right up on that if you're a little kid and you want to have some fun or somebody like me. There's a great kiosk there, which is like a big postcard or greeting card for people that aren't familiar with the area. And it shows the map of the scenic byway right in the center. And then we've numbered a bunch of things that you can do all the way around across the byway. This is that same map right there that we used. Another sign that we did there was to tell people about Baxter State Park and let people know about the Friends of Baxter State Park, which is a group that is a great way to get involved in activities related to the state park. Here's a close up of the Baxter Park sign. So we have a great photograph of people in the park uh, led by a ranger. And then we put up there what you will find and what you will not find. This was an important piece of information so that we get people before they get to the gate so that they're prepared for some of the rules and regulations in Baxter. You can see we designed a little timber frame, kind of a rustic looking uh, sign holding structure. And that was made by someone at the New England Outdoor Center. So we, we had, you know, we tried to engage on all these projects, local, contractors whenever we can. Here's a close-up of that other sign, nice and colorful, and it has six photos with a description of something you can do in the area. Oh, we, and plus you see in the background, another little landscape architecture thing is we, we hand seeded uh, Black Eyed Susans in there so that hopefully in the you know, late summer and fall, it's very colorful too, to help makes you want to stop there. This is the little map of the things you can do on that end of the byway. Here's Baxter Park Gate, and here's Millinocket. So we show, you know, we give you context of where you are, right be pinching between the two lakes. As I like to say, we have a pinch point where people have to travel through, so that's why we picked this spot. You have the wilderness area, but owned by the Nature Conservancy. There's a ball bridge up here. There's River Pond right here. So it's only six miles up the road. It's not that far. Grant Brook over here, you, there's a public boat launch right there. So you can uh, bring your kayaks or canoe and put in there and just go up Grant Brook, Grant Brook, which is a neat wild area. I haven't done that yet. You can paddle across to the Amber Jesus boom house or take a, or put your boat in on this side and go over there to visit that historic boom house. There's, there's information about that online too, if you just Google it. The New England Outdoor Center is located right here, and that is the Hammond Ridge Trail System, which is growing and becoming, um, they have free trails for the public for skiing, snowshoeing, mountain biking. Uh, you can rent bikes there, and it's a really great place um, to have an adventure. We create these scenic turnout interpretive panels statewide. To, if you're driving around the state, you might see these out in the mountains or on the coast. Two granite posts and a little information. At this location, we did Golden Road information, a little bit of history, and great photos. And then this here is. Uh, this one, Destination Katahdin, Thoreau, Roosevelt, and you. And the idea is to give you a little history about previous explorers and inspire you to get out there and do some exploring on your own. We got this great panel that we created, which has a lot of moose images and asks you the question, you wanna see a moose? And as well, I'm sure all of you know, everyone, that's the number one thing people want to do in Maine. Where can I see a moose? I'm out working on the scenic byways and people stop, where can I see a moose? <laughs> it's really funny. 
So we created a panel here where we asked people in the voice of a moose, <laughs> you have to think like one. So that's, that's a fun one to go read. Here, there is a, uh, that council ring I mentioned. I did a little sketch for that. So I'd like to show people, uh, you know, what I do. This is a digital and a hand sketch showing the, the little council ring area. And then we slice boulders to create the benches. And, and that's the little area that you could hang out in. You know, a family could use it or several people could just have some lunch there, go to the store, come back and eat your sandwich. And it's kind of neat thing. And I, I don't know if anyone noticed it, but all these rocks are placed so you can kind of bounce around on them, climb on them. And it's like a little playground, unannounced playground for people. Here you have the, uh, I showed them the, the store sign again, because it's important to let you know that this turnout behind it has a little like a runway that leads right to the store. So those two things we put together and designed it so that if you parked and you were reading information and you wanted to visit the store, this is part of what I call the little economic development that we do with all our byway facilities promoting people to visit the area again and again, and you try to hook them by doing small things like that. And so here, here it is, another view of the place being used before it's all grown in, right after it was completed. So, I mean, that was a lot of information about that place, but I really wanted to show you the the amount of work and thinking that went into creating that small facility. So this is the sign at the Catan Areas trail, um, trailhead that I mentioned. It's at the New England Outdoor Center. They asked for some donations or something like that, which is great, but you're free to wander around and use the trails. This is the view from their center uh, out on the lake. You could, there's Catan in the background, and it's just a, spe a special place to wander around and um, enjoy outside. And then I have a couple of slides here that are, um, I found these uh, post, I found this postcard in Brunswick, Maine, and I think it's an awesome shot of the history of the area. The river drivers on the west branch of the Penobscot. And it's, it's just a fascinating look at their clothing, the types of people there are. And um, it reminds me a lot about the history of the area. And you'll see when we show you the next facility in Patton, how we highlight in our interpretive panels, a lot of the area's history. And I love this photo. I took this myself, just driving around out there. I saw the skitter in the woods. It's kind of a beautiful thing in my mind. And this is a really a big part of this whole scenic byway. The idea is that uh, the, the byway notes that this place is special and this is something that's special about the area too, is the working of the forest. Now jumping into Millinocket, right in downtown, there's Penobscot Avenue right here. And this is the way to the park. To the south gate is up here, and this is towards the interstate over here. There was a big effort to create this green space in the middle of town. I won't get into all the details now, but I just want to bring it up to your attention. And so I drew this plan, helping the group. You can see the green trees there, and we planted those trees in the fall. So this is a little plan just for small tree planting, and I use photographs to show the type of trees. So this is going to be able to take a long time because it's, it's quite, a, um, quite a difficult project to turn something into a nice green space, but it's, it's starting. So the last two Christmas times, there was a tree in the middle and a lighting ceremony. You see the bucket trucks. Uh, that tree was donated by somebody locally. Uh, I did a sketch here down on the right for a possible play area for kids. And then I just have some images over here on the right that show 
what some of the ideas might be for the park. And you can see there's the little byway kiosk right there. So hopefully that'll happen sometime soon. Here's a little sketch I did just to show the type of kiosk. Maybe we'd have a bike rack and a place to sit with some flowers and some rocks. And this is the Main Street sidewalk. And then I did this as a Photoshop sketch, different than the last one, where the background are photos of the existing buildings. And then I took images of the bicycles and the rack and the people and the, and the shop and the, uh, what do you call that? A, uh, like local fair happening on the, on the grass in front. And that's the idea is that this park would become a vibrant place where local community and people are doing things. And then visitors going to Baxter State Park or traveling in the area would be able to stop here and really enjoy this public green space. So I'm gonna leave Millinocket and head out um, towards the interstate in Medway. And we have the Dolby rest area. Uh, we haven't done any really specific improvements here. Hopefully we can do a few more things like an interpretive panel or something. But it is a great place to put a boat in just right behind that shelter. You can sneak out in here and there's just a massive uh, lake area to go exploring. And then another project that we developed for five locations on the byway, hopefully we'll do more, are these metal kiosks. And this drawing up here shows you the kiosk itself, all the details of it, even picked out the right color right there. And then here it is in place. That funding was provided by the Sewell Foundation. And there were a lot of volunteers and people helping with getting that done. And each one of these kiosks has the byway name, the logo where you can get information right there. And then two sides, information we i helped design this great little moose up top with the trees and we put the name in there this is from east millinocket we uh again we are giving the history of the town a little bit we have some great photos of the mill and and then when you're driving through there you don't know the expanse of the of what this place is so that's what we tried to show here And then, so East Millinocket is like a little blip, if, but it's fun to explore the neighborhoods in the back. It's quite a unique little place. So this is their Medway's little sign, welcome to the Medway. We hope, we tried to do a facility in Medway, but just couldn't work it out. But someday, but we have the existing visitor information center. It's at the, this is shown at the Irving station, but now it's located at the recreation area. And so hopefully, um, the, this is typically run by the Chamber of Commerce, but hopefully um, we can get it going and it will be a big thing again. This is the Medway Recreation Area. I don't know if anybody knows this spot, but it's a fun place to get right down to the East Branch to the Penobscot River. There's a couple trails in the back of it. There's playground, you can go swimming. It's really a, it's really a nice place. And you, you, if you don't think about it, you could just drive right by it. And then I added this shot of Medway right here, because when I was studying Medway for some place we might put a byway facility. This is the northern part of the byway, and this is going towards Baxter right here, right here. I thought that, you know, I took a look at this aerial shot and I said, wow, this is where the two branches of Penobscot come together. There's all these, all this wonderful waterway area, and it made me think of how interesting Medway is, even though it just seems like a little place off the interstate. So this is where the byway goes north right here, and that's where we'll go next. And for right now, I'm gonna stretch my, you know, talking away, but just take a quick break. You have a poll question maybe, and then if there's any questions, I'm happy to answer them. And then we'll Great. do the second half.
Thank you, Larry. We'll let you stretch your jaw. I like that, that term. <laughs> Makes me kind of want to do like face exercises. Anyway, thanks again for joining us, everyone. And you'll see in the chat box, there's a lot of information, a lot of um, website links and such. But right now we're gonna do a quick poll and I'm gonna share that now and then I'll share the results with everybody. There's a couple questions on there. You should see it popping up shortly. And while we're waiting, I wanna thank Larry so much for, for providing this. Um, we're about halfway through and, and just the, the pictures we've seen in the chat box, the pictures are wonderful. The information is great. Um, and then also want to thank Millinocket Memorial Library for hosting this presentation today. You can learn more about um, Millinocket Memorial Library or Friends of Katahdin Woods and Waters. Um, and if you're interested in supporting either, you can find information about that on the websites that I will put up shortly. The, um, let's see, I think we've got all of the answers. So I'm gonna end the poll and share that with you. I voted. Great, thanks Larry. <laughs> I don't know if I had a choice or not. <laughs> so it looks like 88% of the people have um, been on the scenic byway before this presentation and a few haven't. So then also the question, have you ever traveled the full length of the byway is 50-50. And I have not done that myself, maybe in bits and pieces, but not all in one day. And so we are officially planning uh, a little bit of a, a day trip to go and have a picnic and see all these wonderful sites that you've been sharing with us. I'm going to stop sharing that poll. Like I said, in a minute, I'll put some additional links to Millinocket Memorial Library. If you're not familiar with what they've been doing at the Millinocket Memorial Library, I encourage you to look at their website or Facebook page. They are going through some amazing changes and have just done wonderful things in the community, including a um, Katahdin Gear Library that offers a lot of gear to many people in the region. I, myself, and our program have used that gear and it's just been so wonderful to have that available. Did everyone see, Larry, did the results pop up for you? Yes. Great. Yeah, I like the 50-50. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was good. That's perfect. Um, uh, I wanted to mention that um, one of the ideas for the Millinocket, we call it Heritage Plaza in town there, was to create some sheds or small buildings that the gear from the library might be stored in. Mm. Because I know they've had a little bit of trouble, um, you know, finding a home for it. So that those are one of the ideas on the table. Mm -hmm. So if anybody, if anybody watching is interested in the park area in town, you should reach out to me, and so I can get you hooked up to help out with some of the ideas. Great, thanks, Larry. And I'll be posting Larry's contact information shortly. Um, he did give permission, so <laughs> I'm going to do that yes. too. I'm, I'm wide open. <laughs> yeah. Are um, there any questions right now before no. we continue? Great. We'll have a little time at the end too for some more questions, or you're you're welcome to enter them into the chat box. For now, I will hand things back to Larry and get a few more things in the chat box for you. Okay. Um, so. The reason I have an alligator up there that says jazz and gumbo is for two reasons. One is I, I did my landscape, I got my master's degree in landscape architecture from Louisiana State University. And so when I went down there, one of the, one of the things I had known about was Mardi Gras and that um, I should go to that. So I went my first year while I was down there and then I went for 20 years straight every year. And it's such a fascinating city, New Orleans. and. Um, this sign, I just love the sign, but it, it, jazz is all about music and gumbo is all about food. So those two things are uh, not only great down there, but they're a big part of life. So I, that's why I like this one right there. So when you leave Medway and you go north on Route 11, that road used to be filled with trucks or, or quite heavy truck traffic and that is no longer the case. So it's a wonderful little stretch of road to ride a bike, just travel on by yourself, you know, take a drive. And over the years that I've been involved up there, we've created, 
myself have been involved, but a lot of different entities have created some neat things. So there's quite a bit to do up there. The first one is this place I call Big Pines. And this is just a tiny little turnout, but you see these big pine trees right, right along the edge of the river. That's the East Branch right there. And this is a different shot, like just in fall, but it's a wonderful little spot to just pull in and enjoy the riverbank. And there's no signs or anything there. Hopefully we'll, we'll do something there. The next spot is another property that we discovered that was owned, that was privately owned, but flooded. There was a house there that was flooded out. And so the county took over the property because you could not build there again because of the flood problems. And it was just sitting idle, nothing happening. So we were able to get it, uh, it's still owned by the county, but they allowed us to do some, um, to create a little Riverside information turnout. So we got a grant to hire the main conservation corps to do some clearing and I was down in there directing them on that. And then, so what really you couldn't see the river, now we opened, we didn't clear things, we just moved debris and opened up the views to the river so that it would be safe and it was a nice pleasant little spot. So you can see from the, this, me making fresh tracks in the winter, right after we had kind of fixed it up. And then um, you can see the river in the background in that line that we cleared. So this is a really nice spot and there's a sign out front now that alerts you to this location. Again, you have these big oaks and pines right on the river's edge that are very old. And it's just a really nice spot. And the, the river's wide here. When you, when you, you know, it widens out and becomes a, a, a great view. Here is the crew showing you right in the operation of putting in one of the interpretive signs. You need a piece of equipment. Those posts are deep down in the ground. You have this heavy metal bracket that the sign goes on. So they're pretty durable little things. And it's quite a bit of work. You'd be surprised, <laughs> especially if you find rocks in the ground. Now, right, if you continue up towards the, between that location and the rest area, there's a new trail there, and I'm calling it the East Branch Riverside Trail. It hasn't been named yet, but it's about a mile long. You can start out at the rest area, and you just walk along the shoulder, and then you duck into the woods right along the river. And so this is, what that trail does is it takes you through the woods and down by the edge of the river in a couple spots, so you can scramble down and find these wonderful little spots like this this great out rock outcrop and uh, there's all kinds of little things to explore like this little sandy area right there and then the rocks are kind of fascinating these are images of the trail there's bridges where you need to cross a little creek and this is this is the trail winding through the forest on the right side and um, at one point it does cross the road too and goes on the other side but then comes back so it's i, I mean i've been there three times and never saw a person. Once skiing and twice just walking it. I saw nobody. So you can just get out there by yourself. It's really nice. And the road, is it's easily accessible to the road and starting from the rest area. Yep, there's my ski shot crossing a, the little swollen creek. And the river was raging too that time of year, which was nice. So this is the grindstone rest area. I assume most people know this. This is Maine DOT owned. It's been there a long time and it's a beautiful spot to picnic, get down by the river. There's the, we have a restroom there. There's a great shot when the, um, of the river really high, sometimes it's low. And you can see, oh, I've seen the eagles flying over this location. But I warn you, if you go swimming, the rocks all point up like that. And they're really sharp. This is upriver from the rest area. This is the trestle in winter, just north of it. I, it was a beautiful day and it's just a beautiful, you know, the river's frozen in the blanket of snow. Route 11, like I mentioned, is great for biking and the Department of Transportation put these signs up to let people know that there could be bicyclists out there. 
And then the next place you can visit is the new Penobscot River Trails. This photo is on the bridge if, as you enter. Uh, late in the afternoon, it's just a beautiful early fall spot. And this is just like that thing I showed you earlier. The amount of these little beautiful landscape places in the Katahdin region is unbelievable. You just have to sort of get off the road to go find some of these gems. This is the big, this is the giant kiosk. They, you know, they have a lot more money than we do. <laughs> anyway, so this is their big welcome information piece. And it's really awesome because it shows in the middle, the map is very clear on the trail system and it's all flat for the most part. So it's really accessible to a lot of different uses and people. The place is done up beautifully. There's a really nice gate there and the boulders. And every, everything is really done well, including the privy. Uh, I can't, I, our privies are nice, but these are, take the cake. Look at the light on the front of it. And they have solar panels for a fan. Yeah, it's really nice. So, at, yeah, I mean, I'm not doing the Penobscot River Trails justice. You have to go visit if you have not. And it's open to the public as well. So uh, you head north and this, you see Katahdin in all its glory in winter. It's just spectacular. The white, the fields are now blanketed in white. Um, I, love, I love snow. And so I see these little powdery paths going down into the woods and waters that surround the mountain. I circled my red twig dogwood, which caught my eye because I'm, you know, a landscape designer. This is a summer view on Route 11 North. I just love that big barn and uh, tractor out front. There's my John Deere connection. And uh, they have moose antlers up over the doorway. That's pretty cool. Then the next stop, as you're heading, you know, you can access from Stacyville, the National Monument. I'm not going to talk so much about that now, but right as soon as it became a National Monument, I stopped in there and took this photo. I thought that would be a nice historic moment for myself, but that, that place is amazing. And you can see right there with uh, all the different things you can do in there and so much more. You should be a birder guy on there. <laughs> Down in the monument along the East Branch, I came to this beautiful flat water area and there's a family of geese back there, just so peaceful and quiet. And again, nobody was around there. So the East Branch offers some white water and some beautiful flat water areas. So um, when you get up, getting close to Patton, you jump into Sherman to grab something at the grocery store to eat. And then we have one of our kiosks there. You can see the map and what to do in the Sherman area. We have on the back of that is this timeline of history in Sherman. I don't know how I didn't know any of this stuff. So um, this is important because it's good for local people to know their history. If you're a young kid, you might not see these photos. They have old Zach, the Civil War cannon. Look at that great photo right there. So that's on the kiosk. There are five out there, so you can you can just drive around and explore those and find them. You have to share the road out there with the Amish. But be careful. So then we make our way into Patton and downtown, and I've got quite a few slides of Patton because we did a big project there. There's another kiosk. This is right, right by the, the gift shop. I think it's the Red Moose. So here we did a detailed map of Patton. You can see the Lumberman's Museum. You got the park right there, um, historical society and some of the great views and places you can go and there's a great trail too which we feature in, in town that you can hop on to. We did a similar history of Patton on this sign. The Patton Historical Society is right downtown. I don't know if anybody's been there but it's fantastic. The people in there are just so warm and welcoming and and uh, it's like, it's just a beautiful old building. There's so much history in that building that you could learn about. Uh, not only Patton, but the whole region. 
So our project in Patton was to was at the recreation center. You can see it in this photo here. And you can see here's another one of my fancy photoscops, Photoshop sketches. You can see I put lawn in like the area that we were gonna work in. And then this is a detailed plan of it over on the right. And we're, we're building another information kiosk. Here's the parts and pieces of the kiosk I had to inspect and make sure that it was gonna to go together correctly. In fact, they were gonna use smaller materials. So when I arrived, I was like, no, no, we can't do it that way. So we, we changed the plan up and uh, we created this really beautiful, durable structure to be right. This is front and center of the whole park. So we wanted it to be very nice. Here's the construction uh, process right in the middle of it. You can see all the granite blocks that you'll see in a minute. This is the kiosk and there's our posts in there. This is the volleyball court. So we create, and then we had a grand opening. You can see the kiosk in the back. So we have to create these little environments for people to be safe. So no, if you're reading this thing, you won't get run over because the blocks are in the way. They double as great places to jump on if you're a kid or just sit down and relax if you're waiting for your kids playing at the park, you know, playing baseball at the park or something. There's a little flower bed to announce, you know, and we did a new sign there to announce the park. There was no sign. And we have the little information banner down there. So if you're traveling along the byway, you, you're like, oh, I could stop there. Pretty straightforward. Here it is in wintertime. This is the, the uh, alumni park in the background. And that's our history panel. Here's a close up. So Patton has kind of always been this historic regional center. So that's what we featured on this uh, panel. There was a racetrack there. Uh, there's a great farming legacy, and you can see these beautiful photos we found for that to show that. There's a flyer about the evening of music you could find in Patton, train station. So there's two of these, and they're really great to go look at to discover the, the, the history of Patton. This is the kiosk. I'll show you the image up closer. We have the, the same byway map, maybe a few changes, our logos, and then we've got this panel about the waters on the bottom and the woods up top. And empty chairs for you to imagine yourself going and sitting in. So this little, any, I mean, if I could talk to all of you, I'd ask, what is this bird? That's a really unique bird that you might see in the region. And uh, I'm not gonna tell you what it is, you need to go look at this sign. I'm sure you know the beaver. But this guy's a little interesting. So this is a beautiful little poster to see. And we try to create these so that you can go back over and over again to enjoy them. On the back side is uh, the history of Patton in detail featuring Main Street because we want people to like park in the rec area and just walk downtown, go to the historical society. Whoops. So that's the alumni park and there's great gardens in there that you can visit. So once in a while, I draw up these little plans for the places I'm working in to help people out. So I threw all my ideas on paper and gave it to them. And you can see the circle. Sure enough, locally, they got together and they built these, they got a grant and they built these new planters. And now it's just an awesome spot. You can just walk around in there and see what people have put in their little individual gardens. They've got vegetables and flowers. It's really neat. And then that's the final view right there. So I'm running out of time and we're heading north and this is always happens when you're traveling on this long byway, you run out of time. So you take a left, you can stop at the Lumberman's Museum, look that up online. If you haven't been there, you don't know what you're missing, it's great. This is an old postcard showing the, the bean hole bean chef. I don't know if they do it so elaborate at the Lumberman's Museum, but it's not quite as structured as this maybe, but you should check it out. You get glorious views when you first start out of the mountain. You can visit the IA, you could take a hike on the IAT up that way. That's their symbol and trail. We help get those symbols up, help the IAT group do that. More great views to the north where it gets more flat and agricultural. 
And then up in Mount Chase, we have another kiosk. This is on one side, shows all the activities you might do up north. That's a little shot of the roadway, which is exciting. That's from the website, by the way. And on the back side of that kiosk, we have the map for the northern end of the byway. I'm going to show you, yeah, there's good hiking spots. There's a bunch of waterfalls up here you can explore. There's a great public beach on Lower Shin Pond. Someone told me about it, and I was like, okay, sure, where is it? I couldn't find it, so it took a while, but I got in there, and it's like a great little spot you can just enjoy yourself. And then you have the campground right on the East Branch, which is a fantastic spot, too. And almost done. So my message is get out there. This is a shot of me coming in the National Monument Road before as a monument. And I biked all the way to the South Gate. It was a great adventure. I saw three people the whole time. And then I, I tell everyone to take a closer look, as you can remember from my pitcher plant flower. Here, these are water droplets on a leaf that become like little microscopes. And you can see in great detail some of the plants, the leaf structure. And then go to Mardi Gras. It's a tough time now, but it's, it's just a great thing to open yourself up to new things. And then embrace your place. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Larry. This was really fun. And I, I, I mean, I, I know I saw it before, but I was still jotting down notes this time of, oh, I've, I've got to remember I want to go there. <laughs> so this was really nice. And, and for those um, that didn't get to attend, it is going to be recorded. So feel free to share that information. Um, they can find that recording. Diana will post it on the Millinocket Memorial Library Facebook page under this event. And we want to thank everyone for joining us. And it's so nice to see faces and friends. And um, you can, I put Larry's email address in the chat box. I will put mine in there now. And watch the Millinocket Memorial website and Facebook page for upcoming events. And thanks again for joining us today. Bye, everybody. That was awesome. Good, thanks, Julie. <laughs> Bye, Marjorie.